Hi, my name's Michael Rampey, and I'm going to present um, a work in progress that we've been doing um, at Macquarie University on the, the Peritora Waterworks in Greece. Um, I've been doing this with Sean Ross and Susan Lupak. Um, they did some field work in February this year, luckily before um, COVID. Um, and I, I've been working remotely in Sydney the whole time, remotely from Greece. Um, and then remotely from our university. So I, I'm a, a senior learning designer at Macquarie University. I'm also the CEO and co-founder of Pedestal 3D. Um, and you know, over the last year or two, I've started Rampy Realistic Imaging as a 3D consultancy um, uh, business. So today, I really want to talk uh, through this uh, through the lens of this project at Macquarie. Um, so this was a, um, a an expedition um, to Greece. Um, for, for a set of archaeology students and a set of our archaeologists to um, Peritorium, so the Sanctuary of Hera. Um, there it is in Greece. Um, there's the, the team um, that, that went on the first um, archaeological um, expedition um, this year, um, including, you can see, Sean and, and Adela um, at the front there. Um, and this is the main site I'm going to be talking about today. So it's this is the cleaned site. <laughs> so there was quite a lot of work done to clean the site before photogrammetry, and that's a a very important lesson to um, when we're working in a site like this to clean it first um, to make sure that you get rid of a lot of the sticks and, and things that would be in leaves on the ground um, because they're things that move and they're things that can be problematic in, in photogrammetry downstream. But this is the site you can see and this is the, the state of it. Um, so today I'm really going to show you uh, what, what we've done using reality capture. Um, we, what we've tried to do using this and, and before Sean left um, and, and as Sean was over there, we, we really wanted to test the limits of a new setup that we've built. So we've built a new reality capture setup um, and, and develop workflows and documentation for this. So I did quite a lot of work training Sean on how to take the photos and, and different methods. Um, and we actually are trying to do a comparative experiments. So using different types of cameras, um, using different uh, methods in the software. So what I'm going to show you today is our big data set, data set as far as we can go. So um, 26 and a half thousand photos were taken of that site that I showed you. Um, yeah, just to put that in context, if you're taking one photo a second, that's seven hours of photography. Um, so that's a lot of work um, with a Canon 5D, so a heavy camera um, with a decent um, brand new 2470 USM lens. Um, and there was an, a, a georeference um, a set put together as well. So I'll, I'll just play a little video now um, of a demo of what we've done, um, and I'll be here at the end to answer questions. If you don't know, recently we've invested in a uh, fieldwork digitization facility. We bought cameras and drones and laser scanners, and um, uh, part of that was building compute. So we built this you know, twenty-five thousand dollar processing server um, that's in faculty now, um, and we put on it the best um, reality capture um, photogrammetry software. So the enterprise version of that, which is very much an uncapped photogrammetry solution. Um, works with laser scans images um, and is uncapped. So this was really a project where uh, myself and, and and Sean really wanted to test the technical limits um, of this as a process. So the inputs are, are just normal photos, as you can see here. So Sean took um, a bunch of photos like this of the site. Um, these were taken early morning, so so shadows are important, lighting's important. So early morning, let us get good exposure, yet still have very soft shadows um, on everything. So we did this over a few mornings. Um, and the end result was uh, more than we've ever attempted before. So there's 26 and a half thousand images um, uh, of this site. So the first step is an alignment. So, so we run it through an alignment um, and it took 22 hours um, to align those. And we, and we got an alignment of, uh, you know, 26,000 out of the 26 and a half thousand. So very good um, alignment odds um, when you get down to it. And, and the result of that now is, is the cameras. So we then know where the cameras are. So if I turn that on, it's wonderful cloud of, um, uh, pictures that really shows you where every individual camera that was um, of the site, how it's calculated the position of those cameras. Um, wonderful overlap, um, wonderful quality, um, and you can certainly see they're quite structured. You know, if you actually look at how these photos were taken, I taught Sean about um, sort of shooting in loops, uh, and shooting in passes um, rather than just taking photos randomly. Um, so wonderful, we get to there. Um, at that stage, uh, what we do is we create a preview mesh, um, and the preview mesh here, so if I turn that on, there we go. So the, the preview mesh now, we can zoom in. Um, you can start to see the shape. Um, <laughs> funny thing is, usually this is where we'd stop um, you know, in the past, or we'd never even get this far in the past. This was a 57 million polygon preview mesh. Um, so this is decimated down a bit to be able to show you um, today. Um, but, but it really shows you the, the detail that we're getting already, just at a very um, fast preview level. So that preview mesh is then used to um, create an orthographic. So that's the next step. So the orthographic that I, I will show you here um, is a projection. So it's a top projection um, of that mesh. 
um, and you can see here I end up with a very high resolution um, top-down picture. Um, so we do this um, at this stage really just to identify our total station points, do it as an easy way. So you can see here, that's a total station point, so a georeference point. There's another one there. So I did this um, to create this image to send to Sean, he was in Denmark, so he could um, help me identify where all these total sta station points were. So for working remotely on the total station points with the orthographics, we use the new image matrix platform. Um, we've developed at Macquarie University, which is a, a deep zoom streaming platform. So we, we loaded up um, a low res um, orthographics. This is low res, it's 15,000 by 15,000 pixels. So we can now load this online, um, look around it, um, find those points. Uh, but the good thing about this platform is um, Sean was able to open this on the web and using the web then um, create an annotation set. So you can actually look, he sent me um, an annotation set where he dropped pins on this um, and then he could identify these total station points against um, the, the spreadsheet we had of their georeference locations and then we can align them on the image. So we had a quite a good um, spread of total station coverage. Um, uh, the next stage is we then import those um, uh, the total station data. So there they are there, the individual total station points. Um, and we, we set what the position is in the real world and then we align again. And the second alignment um, you know, actually gives, you, gives us this component down here, um, which is a tighter alignment, um, but it's also a georeferenced alignment. So if I go to the, the, um, the map now, um, you can see there we are in the world. Let's zoom in. Let's find out where we are. Perfect. Right in Greece. You know, we can go right down um, in this software into seeing where every single camera position where Sean took the 26,000 photos is now identified. Um, so wonderful. Um, so at this stage, we have you know, a tight mesh, a georeference mesh. Um, great. Um, uh, it's been aligned. So we, so we have to start to make some deliverables. And this is something that actually stunned us. We've never worked to this level before. So at normal quality, we end up with a model that has... 1500 parts um, and is 2.1 billion triangles. So you can see the model parts here that you know range from 4 million down in polygons, um, individual components that end up making a mesh at 2.1 billion. So this is a level beyond anything we've ever seen before, anything we've ever attempted before. So if I go to this scene now, um, I'll just come in here, uh, I'll turn off the cameras. Um, so it, what we have is now a, a compute problem. The, the, the best we can show on graphics card is 40 million. So we have something that's 2.1 billion. Um, so what, what we end up doing to, to get around that is, is we do um, subcomponents. So we can now inspect this mesh, but to inspect it at its full quality, um, at this stage, we need to um, make subcomponents. So where I can come in here, I can draw a box around quite a small area, um, and I can create a clipping zone. And once I do that, I will be able to show that. Um, ah, still too big. So I'll create a bit of a smaller clipping zone again. Keep it coming in. Keep it coming in. Um, create that from reconstruction, good. So now it's actually gonna show me that in full res. And you can see it starts to load in the components. So it's loading in the parts one by one. So now this small area has 40 million, and that is the same resolution we have at the full site, at the full 30 odd meter by 30 odd meter site. Um, so, so if you actually can now see the, 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 re the resolving power of this as a process, um, every individual pebble, every individual um, part of this site. Um, so you know that's something that um, it took 12.9 uh, days <laughs> to process um, to create this model, but it worked. <laughs> it created it. It's saved on disk. Um, we now have that as a data set. Um, then the final one is to project the color onto that model. So we, we then unwrap it into textures. Um, and, and again, these numbers are, are silly, but you know, it really shows the power of what we can do now. So we've got 302 8K by 8K textures. Um, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a very large number. But what that actually represents, if you actually look at, um, at texture qualities, right down here is texel size. So this this is the size of meter per texel, and, and to save you the math, it's a third of a millimeter per pixel um, is the resolution of the color that we have. Um, so the color is you know, as good as the mesh, if not better. So a third of a millimeter at um, 30 by 30 meters is now 100,000 by 100,000 pixel orthographic that we're gonna generate next. And that um, represents a 10 gigapixel image. So we've moved beyond single gigapixel, we're moving into the multiple gigapixels here. So it, it now gives us something that remotely will be able to draw an incredibly accurate projection top down at 0.3 millimeter resolution. <laughs> and the color itself, the accuracy of the color that you'll see as we, as we progress um, will, will allow us to do amazing things, um, right down to rock composition. Um, we're really looking at um, these individual components really closely. So that's just a little update today. The, the, I guess the final number is the texturing. Um, took four and a half days.
So the, these 300. So this represents probably about three weeks processing work. So and it's three weeks processing work. Um, it didn't crash. <laughs> three weeks processing work that we got to the end and um, we saved the model. So this is only facility. And we we can deploy this um, a, a, across a range of projects. So always interested to talk new projects. Okay, so let's have a look at the final color that we got. So so I've I've created a new clipping zone in a in another region. Um, you can see Reality Capture is, is quite a, a powerful piece of software, but it does load things in component by component. So you can see individual components sort of um, turning color. Um, that's what it does first. So it's loading in the UV bits, um, and then it will color it um, at the end of this process. Okay, so that took about five or 10 minutes just to get to this level where it's now drawn that. So, and an important thing when working with reality capture, when you get to this point, um, you need to realize that it's not showing you the full resolution. This was a bit disappointing when we first saw this because as you can see here, it looks a little bit blurry. Um, it's not really showing us what it was um, promising um, at a 0.1, uh, 0.3 millimeter resolution. Um, and it, was also, it also shows seams um, across the different components. Um, so, you know, we end up with something that's not very wonderful. Reality capture when working at this scale, um, subsamples internally just to work. Um, so what we end up doing is we create a render um, and we render um, the scene um, to actually see what it really is. Or we create a subcomponent, export that, look at it in MeshLab to see what it really is. So we actually now have this real, real problem um, on what do we do with this data um, to actually see it? What do we do with this data to inspect it? We've created something bigger than we can look at in one go. So you know, we're now looking at making tiles um, as 3D objects, uh, making sub-orthos and things like that. Okay, so this is looking at a render. So this is actually the, a render out of reality capture of that view we just had. Um, and this is taking reality capture and getting it to um, create a scene. And you'll see we have much better quality. Um, when I come to 100% of this render, I could render it a lot larger as well. But you see the sticks we're seeing on the ground now. You see the actual details on these rocks is a lot higher than um, what we were seeing in reality capture. Um, and then finally, to show you the ortho, so here's the ortho. Um, you know, there's still a bit of work to do to clean up some of the back faces. So this blue you're seeing here is a back face. Um, and this ortho uh, came in at, um, just to show you the image size and bring it up to pixels, you know, so 160 by 150,000 um, pixels. And at 100% it's blurry. Yeah, <laughs> of course it is. Um, so what, what we've realized now is, you know, the, the, what reality capture was reporting um, from an ortho point of view, um, it probably was you know, overcompensating by maybe a factor of five um, to actually get something that, you know, if I come out to 20%, um, I get something that's starting to look um, actually um, sharp and usable if I, if I find some actual rough detail here. There we go. Um, whereas, you know, bringing that right into that full what it was reporting um, goes a little bit blurry. So, you know, we, we might end up with something that's, you know, 40,000 by 40,000 and are really sharp and usable. But it's still, we, we're happy with this um, to, to actually see that um, full resolution that's on an ortho like this. Um, the problem we've run into, though, is we've, we've gone beyond um, JPEG size. So JPEGs can't be bigger than 65,000 by 65,000. Um, so we end up going through JPEG 2000 workflows and, and big TIFFs. And, and again, we have a big data problem here. Okay, so I'll just finish on this site. This is the, the other site that we did a lot of photogrammetry of, which is the, the waterworks, um, where we can actually see the, the original wells um, and the, the, um, the pipes and, and all of the different um, archaeological components of that, um, which is quite interesting, especially if you, you start to look at um, what we're getting right down at the base of these. And I, but only one of these was excavated, um, one of these basins. The other two um, will be excavated um, over the next few years, as you can see these other ones. Um, and, and this was uh, done in a, in a few ways, again, to, to do a comparative um, analysis. If, if you actually look at this um, reconstruction, if I bring the cameras up, um, it, you'll see a, a range of cameras around the site. And we're, and we're getting a good mesh of the site, but nowhere near as much as what you saw in the other one. Um, but then a lot of cameras in here. So, so really looking at um, how far we can go on, on that basin itself. And uh, again, like from just anecdotally so far, we're getting incredibly accurate lines. Um, incredibly accurate calibration. So you know, we'll be able to do drawings and projections um, sort of in an unprecedented way, um, cross sections of this. Um, that's only gonna get better over the next few years as we do more and more at this site and we add to these models.
Okay, thank you for your time. Um, I'll be here for any questions.